Hello everyone, and welcome back to the final edition of Seduce Me to the Demon War. This is Diana's route, so let's continue. I do know. Oh, awesome! Alright then. Diana's a very interesting character, huh? She sure is. Anyway, I have one last question. Uh, I'm good. Alright then. Trigger me oh, away. Just so you know, though... Anytime I I'm, think that should okay. be everything. This should be interesting. You, huh? you sure did. Oh, Disclaimer. It's fine. I'll take Michelle it. Laws. Good job. This <laughs> I do. Thanks, Thanks Michelle. Di do not call me die. <laughs> okay. My my name is Meemaw. <clears throat> I was in love with a succubus, it was true. I had fallen for the charms of a succubus and I was t about to dive headfirst into the demon world with her to save her kingdom. Do you have any regrets? None. I smiled as Diana held me in her arms and carried us both through the night sky. We had shared a sweet kiss, the first of hopefully many in the future, and were about to cast a spell to enter the demon world. Diana looked to the ground that was far below us and pointed her free hand down towards it, closing her eyes. As the last words left her mouth, a large purple pentagram appeared in the grass before twisting and becoming a black void. I gripped onto Diana, scared at what I was seeing. Last chance. Last chance to turn up the volume a little bit, because I think it's a little quiet. Let's, let's put it there. I like the piano music. I gulped at the sight, not sure of what to make of this. Was this really what I wanted? My curiosity, however, guided my decision and forced me to take a deep breath. I closed my eyes and let calm wash over me before looking up at Diana. Uh, let's go. Diana smiled and wrapped both arms around me, laying a protective hand over my head. Hang on. I tightened my grip on Diana, obeying her command. As I held tight, I felt air quickly rush past our bodies as Diana tilted back and began to let us fall towards the ground. Was she insane? I looked at Diana, seeing her smirk at me before closing her eyes. I did the same, naturally preparing for an impact with the ground. What I felt was a cool rush of energy brushing over my skin as I had fallen into water. I slowly opened my eyes and found myself staring into a vast, dark space, holding on to a woman who was no longer wearing any clothes. Odd. I was clinging to a woman who had no clothing, but instead had purple marks across her skin and horns adorning her head. However, I could tell that this woman was still Diana just by looking into her eyes. Diana smiled at me and kissed my forehead before tightening her hold on me and muttering softly. I held on to her body as I felt us begin to move through the space, as if a giant fan had pushed us forward. Onward, we continued through the darkness, with me unsure of where we were going and Diana guiding the way. We began to slow, and as soon a small light appeared, slowly growing as we got closer to it. I had to shut my eyes as it began to consume us. I felt weightless. I couldn't feel anything except the woman in my arms, and it felt somewhat exquisite. I wanted to drown in this feeling, become lost in it. However, our journey through the light was coming to an end. The light around us faded away, and soon I found myself lying on Diana as she lay on a stone-cold floor. The air, however, smelt of fire and blood. I looked up, seeing fire everywhere in sight. What the hell? This was the demon world? It's anger! A loud shout forced me to look over and see a man running at me with a spear and a rageful expression. I screamed and rolled off of Diana, scooting away to avoid being skewered. As he continued toward me, I screamed. No! I looked up to see Diana kneeling in front of me and gripping the man's spear, pointing it away from her. The man stared wide-eyed at Diana as she glared back. My lady, you live? Of course I do. I told you I would return, and thus I have. The man gave a small sigh of relief, lowing, lowering his weapon and propping it up to lean against it. As I examined him now that he wasn't getting for me, he was wounded and exhausted, panting heavily and gripping his spear tightly. I'm so glad. You're so cute. As he toppled over, Diana gasped and rushed over to him, kneeling by his side. Settle. I rushed over as well, wanting to see what was going on. Who was he? Why did he attack me? Why was the room on fire? Sano, what happened? Um, 
the room on fire would kind of be my first concern, but you know. We, we were attacked by the demon lord. He took advantage of your absence. I began to cough violently. We needed to get out of this room wherever we were. Diana, we need to get out of here. Diana nodded and grabbed my hand and Sarah, chanting under her breath. The room around us began to shift as if it were changing instead of mis moving. Soon we were outside a castle, staring at it as flames erupted from each window. What was happening? Diana's face was of pure shock, staring at the castle in absolute terror. All the color, besides for the purple marks on her skin, had faded to a pale white in horror. We drove them back, but the flames are too powerful. At that moment, something in Diana's eyes changed. Her anger sparked and she stood, quickly walking around us and towards the castle. Diana! Come! I command thee, White Winds! Cross these fires beneath your hands! I stared as the wind in the air quickly began to pick up and a purple glow began to surround Diana's body. It was like a storm was rushing towards us, but there was no rain or thunder, just wind. The winds forced back the flames that danced in the windows, and smoke began to rise from each one, signaling the death of the fire. The windows continued to be filled with wind and air, most likely to kill the flames deep within the walls. I, however, could only stare at Diana. Her body was rigid, and her gaze was intently focused on the stone castle. Soon the winds began to die out, and all that was left was smoke rising from the windows into the dark purple and black sky. You did it. Oh. She's angry. Diana looked to Sarah, intensity still embedded in her eyes. Where are the king and queen? I heard Sarah's breath hitch, and I turned to look at him. He had a look of pure pain and guilt. What had happened? Diana walked over and stared down at him, now almost glaring daggers at him as she clenched her fist at her sides. Speak, Sano! The imp demons. While we were fighting the flames in the army... The imp demons snuck through our defenses. My heart, despite not fully understanding the situation, began to tighten. Something was incredibly wrong. Saro shut his eyes as a pair of demons I assumed to be allies rushed over and began casting magic over his body, closing his wounds. They snuck into their room. Diana suddenly turned and bore, bolted towards the castle, causing me to jump up. Diana! I began to sprint after her, following her inside the castle and trying to keep up with her. Her panic breath kept me following her direction, despite her fast twits, twists and turns through the ashy corridors. No, 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 no. I could hear Diana sobbing, praying as she ran. I did my best to keep up, not wanting to lose her and not wanting her to be alone right now. We turned into a long hallway that had a pair of golden doors at the end. They were unscathed, as if the flames had not disturbed the door, or perhaps the room behind it. Please be alive. Please! Diana bolted from the doors and began to pull them open, grunting at the weight. I stopped running, skidding forward from the abrupt stop. Whoever she wanted alive, I hoped they were as well. As the doors finally opened, however, the foul stench of blood erupted from behind them, the scent filling my nostrils. Gah! Diana flung the doors wide open and could only stare at the sight we both saw. Blood. Blood covered the walls, the floor, the ceiling. The entire room was painted in gore, skin, bone, and massive amounts of blood. Only three things, barely coated in red, stood in the middle of the room on the ground. Two broken crowns and a small tiara that was barely large enough to fit a newborn's head. <gasps> Diana slowly walked into the room, the blood on the ground part painting her bare feet, and she fell to her knees in front of the item, staring down at them. I couldn't bring myself to enter the room with her. I watched as she lifted them to her chest, curling her shoulders over herself and shaking almost violently. Oh, as she continued to grieve over the ornaments in her hands, a dark, almost deadly, and evil-looking aura surrounded her body. It began to flicker and glow like a dark flame that wanted to engulf the room she knelt in. As it reached an apex and began to violently flicker through the room around her, Diana arched back and screamed to the ceiling, her voice heavily laced with magic, pain, and rage. I'll kill you! Thank you. Made me jump a little bit. Watching her body burn in the intense black and purple flame-like energy made my heart stop in fear. I had never seen her like this, and I was scared as to where her anger would drive her next. 
Just fucking watch. Don't interrupt. I kept my distance, giving her space to mourn and grieve. She had lost three people very close to her, and she came back to her castle in flames. She needed space and time. I waited until she finished, curling into herself and whimpering hoarsely. Diana. Let's... Let's just go. Diana and I left the room with her, unable to turn around and look back. We walked through the ashy corridors of the castle. Diana silenced by the sight and by her own grief. My heart was heavy for her. Still, the demon lord who had done this was still a threat at large, and who knew when he would return? Diana led the way to a room which, as expected, was as burnt as could be. However, Diana waved her hand through the air, casting some sort of silent spell. Through some sort of prestidigitation? The ash and soot in the room vanished, and the furniture and decor were prepared. We at last stepped in, with Diana slowly lying down on the bed, unable to carry on any further. Looking at Diana's face, her eyes were puffy and red, while her skin almost became void of any color beyond the taint of her demon marks. If she wasn't breathing, one would assume that she was dead. Diana stared at the ceiling, a world of emotion swimming in her eyes. Despite what had happened, at last she spoke. I need to send you back. What? Now was not the time to think about me, and I knew it. Besides, I came here for a reason. I wasn't going to go back knowing that Diana needed support. I had no regrets in coming here, and I would help her through this. No, Diana. It's too dangerous here. I don't care, Diana. Diana sat up slowly and looked at me, a form of weak anger in her eyes. However, she knew that it was fruitless to argue with me. After all, she made a deal with me, and I could see the obligation to obey buried behind her anger. Diana closed her eyes and lowered her head. The demon lord will most likely return. And will be ready for him. I gently took Diana's hand and lifted her chin so that she looked at me. The anger that was plaguing her melted into sadness and broken hope as she stared back into my gaze. There were remnants of rogue tears adorning her face, and seeing her so scarred made me frown. I knew that we would get through this. We just needed to rest for now. We would deal with the issues this world brought after. My lady? Diana and I turned our heads to see Sarah by the open doors, and I stepped away from Diana, giving her space. Behind him, multiple soldiers, servants, and other demons rushed down the hall, most likely to check for other issues and possibly try to fix the damage on the castle. Yes, Sarah? Who is this human? For a brief moment, I could see a look of disdain in his eyes as he looked at me. However, it only lasted a second as he looked to Diana, waiting for her to reply to him. Sarah, this is my guest. She came S back with me, too. Diana looked to me, trying to find the words in my eyes. What was I to her? My curiosity bubbled, also, as I waited for the completion of her answer. She came to aid me in this war. But what of your fiancé? What of the other sons? They are gone. They have disappeared into the human world, and I can no longer trace them. I have failed. The guilt and grief in Diana's voice deepened, most likely reminding herself that she saw the result of failing moments ago. Sarah O'Hever stepped up to Diana and knelt in front of her, surprising me. What was he doing? He was a guard, first off. Why was he being so bold enough to step to her? You didn't fail, my lady. The demon lord attacked us despite giving us his word that he would wait for you to return. He broke his end of the agreement. Yeah, because he's an asshole. I know. Staring at Diana and Sarah, I could see that they had a very close and deep connection. Was Sarah a friend, or was he something more? I could recognize the emotions within Sarah's eyes as he looked up at Diana. He looked to be in love with her, or at least had some form of ultimate care for his lady. Sarah gently took one of Diana's hands and placed his lips upon it. Instantly, I could almost see energy flow from his body into hers from the kiss alone. Was this how energy transfer worked when you weren't the giver or receiver? The color in Diana's skin returned as she let out a sigh with her happy with her body relaxing at last. Saro, however, continued to keep his lips over her hand. Something in my gut irked me about him. It's fine. Saro was just giving Diana his energy. There was nothing wrong with that. Why would I get upset over it? I wouldn't. Besides, Diana needed energy to recover from her explosion of energy and from quenching the fire on the castle. She used a lot of energy. Diana smiled as Sarah and softly pulled her hand away from him, making him look up at her, not in surprise, but with a smile of his own. Thank you, Sarah. It is my duty to serve you, my lady. Sarah stood and stepped back, looking to his mistress and to me. Do we plan to retaliate, my lady? 
We will. I expect the Demon Lord will come for a second attack, not realizing that I have returned. What can we do then? Diana looked at me, a small glimmer of fear in her eyes, but her resolve rekindled and she let out a serious vision, visage cover her expression. I will meet him on the battlefield should he come again. My lady, you've just returned. That I have. But the Demon Lord will not care if he learns of my return. If anything, news of my return will spur him to attack sooner than later. I must be there and stop him. Diana looked to Sarah with a cold expression, making Sarah stand up straight like the guard he was meant to be. Tell everyone to miss- Oops. Sarah nodded and turned to the door to do his job. Before he exited the room, however, Diana called out one last thing to him, which made him freeze. And when you are done, please retire to my room. I will rest here for the night with my guest. As you wish, my lady. Doll. He's like, why? With that, Sarah left and closed the door behind him. The way Sarah answered Diana seemed forced, but I could understand why. After all, if he had feelings for her, I became an obst uh, obstacle for him as I was with her. That didn't stop me, however, from wondering where I stood with Diana. She was going to stay here with me? This was my room? Diana let out a sigh and moved in the bed to rest against the back wall of the bed. Come, we must rest. I nodded and walked over, lying beside her. However, instead of Diana laying down, she guided my head to rest on her lap. You're not going to sleep? Demons don't sleep, dear. At least not in this world. Why not? Because if we shut our eyes for too long, then we open ourselves up for someone to take advantage of us, or kill us when we're not aware. I gulped, now worried and frightened to sleep. Diana chuckled, however, and petted my head. You can sleep, however. I will be resting, but my eyes will remain open. Can you truly rust like that? Demons and humans are different, dear. Demons can function for years without needing to rest, as long as they continually feed on energy. However, demons can rest to stop spending energy. That's why we have beds. My curiosity began to peck at me again, but my exhaustion took control over my body. As I felt my eyes gradually shut, I could hear Diana whisper, I hope that you don't mind me taking your energy as you sleep. Go for it. Before I let sleep consume me, I shook my head. It was alright. Diana needed as much energy as she could for whatever the Demon Lord had in mind. I felt almost a bit honored that she was taking energy from me, as odd as it was. At last, sleep consumed me. Despite what was happening around me, the world of sleep was peaceful and calm. For that moment, I could truly be at rest. At least for a moment. My sweet Isaiah. Huh? I looked around the darkness of my room, trying to pin down the direction of Sarah's voice. Why was he in my dream? There was no reason why he should have been there. The sound of footsteps echoed in my head, causing me to grip over it and look around frantically. What was happening? At last, a line in the darkness opened up to reveal it as an open door. Opening it was Sarah, with a kind smile on his face, staring into the dark space. What? I looked to him, but he didn't seem to notice me as he stepped into the room and walked past me. I followed his walk and gasped at what he was walking towards. Now illuminated by light, I took in the sight of Diana in a jail cell on her hands and knees, weak and frail as she stared at the one approaching her. Sam, what is happening? Why am I- Shh, Everything is just fine, my lady. My heart stopped as I watched Sarah kneel in front of Diana and slid his hand between the bar to lift her chin. Diana seemed to nuzzle his hand softly and unconsciously making him chuckle. Soon enough, I will destroy the Demon Lord and hand you the throne of the entire world. Everyone will bow to you as their queen and ruler, as they rightfully should. Sam, I don't understand. You may not understand now, but you will in time. I promise. Diana crawled closer to Sarah, wrapping her hands around the bars to keep her up. Where is she? What happened to the human? For a moment, Sarah stared at Diana, looking completely oblivious to what she meant. Hey, I'm right here. Despite knowing that I was seeing a dream, I instinctively called out to Diana, hoping she would see me regardless. To my displeasure, she didn't. Who are you talking about, my queen? You know who, Sarah. She... <clears throat> Sarah silenced Diana by gripping her chin hard, making her gasp and stare up at him in shock. My lady, I don't know who you are talking about. Diana whimpered in his hold in fright. Fear painted over Diana's expression as Sarah pressed his forehead against the bars to stare deep into her eyes. I felt myself rush to Sarah and try to grab him, but my hands merely phased through his body like I was a ghost. My lady, you must stay here for now. Why? 
Without a single word died out as she stared into Sarah's eyes. Something in her eyes began to shift from red to gold. However, her black pupil slowly morphed into glowing black crosses. What was Sarah doing? Because I have not yet finished the demon lord, my love. My love? Why the sudden change in name? I could only watch as Sarah leaned back with a grin. Once I finish this war, then you may come out and fulfill your destiny. With only me at your side. Well, that's not very nice. Staring as at Diana, I watched as she began to shed tears, but they were not clear as water, but black as oil. On her chest, a black burn in the shape of a cross appeared, glowing with some sort of dark aura. May those useless memories burn away. Remember only the one who has served you his entire life. Saro! My words were futile, but I couldn't stand the silence. However, as Diana's tears finally stopped, the stains on her cheeks drying along her skin. Sarah stared into Diana's eyes, burning his gaze into them. Now, do you remember the human? No, it, it couldn't be. The burn on her chest flashed a bright white aura before settling down, revealing the permanence it had over her skin. It was a real scar on her flesh, no longer a figment of magic. Sarah smiled lovingly, lovingly at Diana before guiding her head forward and leaning in to kiss her between the bars. Diana closed her eyes and practically moaned against his lips, but most likely feeling some sort of energy from it. However, Sarah pulled away gently and made Diana pant slightly in need. Was she that desperate for energy? Never mind, my love. Forget I said anything. Sarah ran his fingers over Diana's cheeks, causing Diana to shudder at the touch and let out a pleasured sigh. Now rest. Nothing will harm you in here. Diana nodded slowly before relaying to her side and letting her body slowly shift into slumber. With another chuckle, Sarah stood and turned around. That human's life for a stone destiny. A perfect trait, if I do say so myself. I snarled and rushed at him, but wound up running through his body and falling to the floor. Sarah walked back towards the open door and stood by it to look back at Diana with an almost evil-looking smile. <laughs> Nothing will keep us apart anymore, Isaiah. I jumped up and ran at him, but as he stepped through and closed the door, I found myself shooting up in bed, sitting to sit up, panting. Ah! What? What's wrong? I looked over to see Diana sitting in the same spot as she was when I fell asleep and staring at me with wide, concerned eyes. There were no marker on her chest and no crosses in her eyes, which made me feel somewhat relieved. I looked around, trying to see if Sarah was in the room, but he was nowhere to be found. Ah, uh, are you alright? Uh, yeah, I'll fucking tell her. I had to tell her about the dream. I turned to her and took her hands, making Diana gasp and stare at me in even more confused shock. I had a dream last night, sir, who locked you in some sort of jail cell and wiped your memories of me, and I couldn't do anything, and- Wait, wait, stop. What? Diana took one of her hands from mine and placed it on my head. Did she seriously not believe me? I glared as she stared at her hand. It's true. I believe you, but I want to see it for myself. I stared at her, now realizing she was taking energy from me in my forehead. Diana closed her eyes and remained silent for a moment. How would she react? As she pulled her hand away from me, she smiled at me. It was a nightmare, dear. I'm sorry you had it. But I can assure you, no magic like what you saw exists, nor would Sarah ever do that to me. I stared. I could see the genuine feeling behind her words, but something in my gut wouldn't let this go. How could she be so sure that magic like that didn't exist? What if Sarah was a terrible person? But what if... Sarah has been with me ever since I was a child. I would know if he was a bad person. There's nothing to- Suddenly, the door to the room burst open, causing Diana and I to separate and stare at the intruder. It was a soldier who seemed to be a runner for the army, judging from his outfit. Princess! The Demon Lord approaches! God, this is fast. Diana was right, the Demon Lord was going to show up today. I looked to the far window to see the sun barely up over the oddly colored purple sky. It was morning, as Diana expected. Diana quickly threw her legs over the side of the bed and stood, pointing to the guard. Tell every able-bodied soldier to head for the gates. I will be there shortly. <sighs> head for my back, because it fucking hurts. Yes, your highness! <sighs> oh, excuse me. The soldier ran out, followed by a handful of soldiers that either accompanied him or were heading in the same direction. 
I looked to Diana, surprised to see her ready. How much energy did she take during the night? As I got a good look of her, something about her seemed to have changed, but I couldn't put my finger on it. I have to thank you, you know. Huh? For what? Diana turned to look at me with a smile. As she did, I could see a faint layer of purple energy surrounding her form and her eyes glow completely gold. You gave me a large amount of energy last night. Her voice echoed through the room, make me, making me internally shudder. She sounded almost ethereal, and the power behind her voice almost drowned my senses. It was as if she was no longer a simple mortal, but a goddess. How much energy did she consume last night? As the energy and glow in her eyes faded away, Diana smiled. Diana gently took my hand and rushed with me out of the room, guiding me out of the castle. Around us, servants and soldiers rushed in, one in direction or another. I need you there beside me when I face him. You won't be hurt, I promise. Is it going to be really short? I hope so. I followed step by step, nodding in reply. I felt a bit honored that she wanted me with her, but I shook off the excitement, knowing what I was walking towards. The demon lord was approaching, and we would face it. We would be face to face with it. Diana led me through the castle grounds and onto the battlements, overseeing the distance beyond the kingdom, where a large line of creatures lined up out and outlined the horizon. I felt my heart stop as the tallest figure stood between them and us. Taller than any man I had ever witnessed was a man I was meeting for the first time, the Demon Lord. The mere sight of him sent fear down my spine, but this was the man who hurt Diana, so he was my enemy. City of Lilith, rejoice! You will fall before the sun reaches its peak! Diana re released my hand and stepped between the embrasures of the wall and walked through the air towards the ground like she was descending an invisible staircase. As she did, I jumped at the sound of the army soldiers on the ground, pointing their weapons towards the incoming army. Diana's voice bellowed through the air, causing the line of creatures to step back in fear. As her feet touched the ground, the air seemed to pulse with energy. However, the demon lord stepped forward with a dark grin. Succubus! You have returned. You have failed to bring my sons home, it seems. The demon lord laughed at whatever Diana had shouted, making me worried for Diana. Would she be okay on her own? She stepped forward a couple of feet before pointing her palms towards the ground. Before my eyes on Diana's back, the marks adorning her skin began to dance and weave before it, detaching themselves from her body and forming two large demonic wings. They flapped against the air in unison, causing a large gust of wind to push forward. Soldiers of Lilith! Come to my side if you wish to shed my enemy's blood! As Diana spoke, the soldiers who had gathered at the front rushed forward and stood in two lines at Diana's side, pointing their weapons at the demon lord and his army. In number, Diana and her soldiers were outmatched ten or twentyfold. However, something told me that the, the battle would be in Diana's favor. At my side, a large line of archers positioned themselves and aimed at the army, ready to fire on command. Steady, men! I looked to the side to see Sarah walking down the line with his hand raised, waiting for a signal. However, the sight of him made me remember how he was in my nightmare. Could he be as evil as he was then? From Diana, a large, thick tendril with a gigantic mouth began to sprout and spill out from a magical circle floating above her chest, sliding around her body and towards the ground. As I stared, I could recognize the shape of the mouth from when Diana first met me when she dangled over it before letting me make a deal with her. Soon the tendrils released itself from Diana's body and took physical form with purple and black scales, a head formed where its teeth were convulsing with new moments as a wicked purple tongue lashed from its newly formed mouth. A giant hundred-foot stake now stood between the Demon Lord's army and Diana's army. It hissed at the creatures in front line and quickly began to slither forward in hunger. I didn't get a chance to watch it attack. I turned back to Diana to see her lift up off of the ground and form a purple saber in her hand, lifting it above her head. For the pride of Lilith, to battle! At her last words, Diana flew forward and slashed through the air, causing a large purple arc to shoot out of her saber and strike down a section of the Demon Lord's front line. I watched as both armies charged forward towards each other and began to clash swords. Beside me, a rain of arrows flew from the battlements down towards the incoming section of the Demon Lord's army, causing me to duck in case they returned fire. 
To my surprise and glee, the Demon Lord's army couldn't push Diana or her army back. They held their positions and cut down every enemy that came at them. The Demon Lord, watching instead of fighting, glared as Diana flew through the air, cutting down sections of the army with ease. The snake that Diana had summoned was dealing major damage to the enemy as well, carving the lines and devouring handfuls of them at, at a time. Each time it did, it got bigger or became much more menacing. I could barely take it all in. The battle was merciless, seemingly endless. Diana's army was small, but had strong morale, cutting through the Demon Lord's men with ease. The archers beside me continued raining down arrows on the incoming soldiers, hoping to nickel and dime their soldiers from the, from the ground troops. I was so glad that Diana wanted me there, but I knew that I wasn't ready to fight in a war, so I kept crouched to watch the battle safely. Eventually, Diana's army began to push back, forcing the enemy soldiers to either retreat or try to regain ground. Diana, however, decided it was time to deal with the real threat and swooped towards the Demon Lord. Both demons arced their weapons at each other, Diana with her saber and the Demon Lord with a giant sword and clash steel. As they did, purple flame and red lightning spasmed from the impact and pressed against each other in a battle of strength. The Demon Lord looked so much bigger than Diana, but somehow Diana matched her strength and did not budge in the parry. How? You cannot be this strong! You know nothing of true strength! Some of the battling around the duel stopped just from the sheer sight of Diana matching the Demon Lord's power. I am the Princess of Lilith. I will defy your will and save this world from your tyranny once and for all! A collective gasp echoed through the air as Diana somehow managed to push back against the Demon Lord, forcing him to step back in the parry. Diana was doing it. She was defeating him. The Demon Lord slid his sword from the parry and swung again at Diana, making her block, but failed to push her back. He repeated his attack twice, three times, but continued to be pushed back each time. The soldiers around them took in the morale inspiration and fa fought back tenfold, forcing the Demon Lord's army back over the arching horizon. Diana and the Demon Lord, however, continued to clash swords, beating steel to steel. As the Demon Lords finally jumped back, he formed a large ball of red lightning in his hands, shooting it towards Diana like a flash of thunder. <laughs> The, act, the attack impacted, sending Diana flying back, but with her wings, Diana managed to flip back to face the Demon Lord with ease. In retaliation, Diana formed a spiraling set of fireballs over her head and chucked them at the Demon Lord. With a glare, the Demon Lord slashed through each ball, forcing them to dissolve into the air. Diana glared hard in reply before flying at her opponent, slashing through the air with her saber. From there, it became a battle of blades and close-range magic attacks. Neither side would give in, and no soldier dared to step in, afraid of being the victim to one of their attacks. The duel became blurred by the sheer speed passing between them, frantic and powered at once. It was slightly dizzying. Finally, the two slid away from each other. Diana was intact, breathing heavily from exerting so much energy, and the Demon Lord was weaponless. Adjusting my eyes, I could see that he was no longer carrying a weapon and was gripping his arm tightly to stop some form of wound from bleeding out. How could this happen? How? Diana didn't respond. She flew forward to engage him again, but stopped as the Demon Lord's body became overcome by red lightning. As if the lightning had ended him, the Demon Lord's body vanished. I will return, and your kingdom will fall! His voice echoed through the air, haunting everyone and making the trees around us bend and sway at its might. However, as the voice died out, the army the Demon Lord left behind vanished as well. It took a moment to take in. We had won the battle. We fought and drove the Demon Lord and his army out of the kingdom. We did it. Quickly, the soldiers of Diana's army cheered huzzas for their victory. Diana's snake vanished at last, and Diana herself slowly began to fly back towards me. I was grinning ear to ear as she slid behind the embrasures to me. <sighs> However, I did not expect Diana's eyes to roll into the back of her head and force her to collapse against me. I wrapped my arms around Diana, as she indeed fainted in my arms. Diana! Isaiah! As I collapsed on my knees with Diana in my arms, Sarah rushed over and dropped to his knees beside us, taking one of Diana's hands. Diana, however, didn't react even as energy began to flow from Sarah to Diana's hand. Yes, sir. She needed energy to recover, and I had to help. I gently took her head in my hands and kissed her, letting her unconsciously take my energy. I could feel warmth slowly coming back to Diana's skin as we kissed, making me slightly smile. 
Diana's free hand gently slid up between our bodies and cupped itself to the side of my neck. If Diana was awake now, she was enjoying the kiss we were sharing and wasn't going to let it go just yet. I could feel my nerves dance as energy sli slipped from me into Diana's lips. Before long, Diana disconnected the flow, pulling away slightly to look up at me. Diana slowly lifted herself up onto her feet. Instinctively, Sarah and I both grabbed onto Diana's hands, helping her up. She looked to us with a kind smile. Thank you. I couldn't tell which one of us she was thinking, but I accepted it with a smile of my own. You did it, Diana. You drove him back. Diana chuckled a bit before standing up or straight. Her wings that had folded against her back splayed out behind her near us, causing Sarah and I to step back. As Diana began to speak, her voice booming through the air, the cheers around us became silent. Friends, we have won this battle, but they will not be gone for long. This is the beginning of a war to end tyranny, to end chaos. I could tell that every demon in the area had their ears and hearts open to Diana. I felt myself become full of courage just from listening to her. You have shown great courage today, but you must build even more for the war ahead. The demon lord will try to cut you down, but we will prevail! We will. As I am the last living heir to this grand kingdom, I swear unto you all that I will fight until the very end and free this world of the evil that is the demon lord. When I ask now, who will stand with me? The sound that came after was loud and eardrum piercing. The sound of a thousand cheers beat through the air and showed the allegiance of every demon in the area, and then some. I could only stare in awe as Diana took in everyone's cheers and took in a heavy breath. It was then that I knew that I had become part of something grand at the side of a woman who would change history. The following days were full of chaos. The demon lord tried to come back and reclaim his pride, but Diana somehow managed to press back with ease, giving him more wounds than inflicted before. It was like the castle became an impregnable fortress. Soon word spread around the neighboring kingdoms of the demon lord's defeat and continued failed attempts to attack. Many leaders sent messages of alliance, with Diana humbly accepting, and soon enough we drove the demon lord's army far back away from us. After every battle, she would wind up in my arms, much to the slightly obvious disapproval of Sarah. Whenever a demon questioned my presence, Diana would simply wave them off with a token of praise towards me. She is my most honored guest, and she is here to help us win this war. Still, the thought of what we officially were began to make me concerned. Did Diana see me more than an energy source, an ally? We had guessed before we returned, but since then I couldn't have been more unsure. I began to question myself. Why was I here? I could only shake my head in response. I shouldn't doubt anything. We were in the midst of a war at, with Diana at the front. She had many responsibilities, many that I could never even hope to think on. The pinnacle moment of our relationship, however, came when a brute demon stormed into the castle all on his own. He was unarmed and carrying a single item, which made many demons step away from him in fright. Diana, Sarah, and I were in the war room with three other beings who I am named Fay, Rabbit, and Shadow for simplicity. When the demon lord, when the doors to the room swung open, everyone was forced to turn their heads from the map we were previously poring over. What is? All the protests became silent as the being who entered chucked this object in the hands onto the table. As it settled to a stop in the middle of the map, all of the demons in the room stared in absolute shock. Lying on the table was a red, broken horn. There was no blood or bone in it, but it was indeed a horn of the being who had stormed in. I became confused, wondering why this being decided to throw his horn at us. As I looked to Diana, however, I could see the shock in her eyes. The expression on her face was a mixture of fear, surprise, and a little flattery, like someone had given her an exotic bouquet of bloody, thorn-filled roses. Diana finally looked up at the demon who had entered the room and examined him. Brute demon. What is the meaning of this? What does it look like? It looks like you are swearing your allegiance to the rebellion. The question is why? He swore allegiance with his horn? It's a brute demon tradition. If they leave their tribe to serve a non-nomadic kingdom without marrying into it, then they must break a horn in allegiance. However, from what I recall, there are no more tribes left in the demon world after the demon lord's mass genocide of the brute demons. I stared wide-eyed at Shadow. Mass genocide? The demon lord had that much power to eliminate an entire demon race? 
I looked at the brute demon, seeing him glare hard at Shadow at his remark. Well, he didn't kill everyone. So there are more of you? A flash of grief flashed in the brute's eyes before he looked down at the table. No, I'm the only one left, and I refuse to let that bastard get away with this. I felt incredibly terrible for the grief he had to bear. It must have been horrible to be the last of his kind. I looked to Diana, wondering what she would do with this information. The look on fa Diana's face went enigmatic. She was obviously in deep thought, but how was she going to handle the situation before her? Finally, she took in a deep breath and let out a sigh before speaking. Sir Root, you come swearing your allegiance to the Rebellion. Is there anything you demand of us for your service? It was the question she asked every Alliance leader. They often asked for the promise of freedom or an oath of protection from harm. The demons who were with us in the room simply joined out of their own interests, but what about this demon? The brute demon rolled his shoulders back and stared hard at Diana, making her straighten up a bit. I ask for you to perform a sending. A wit? A sending? And that will be this for this episode. So if you enjoyed, please leave a like. If you have something to say, please leave a comment. Excuse me. And if you would like to see more, please subscribe, and I will see you all next time.